All right, we'll call the meeting to order. The uh, first item, the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do you have any additions, deletions? Move agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. Next item is the minutes from August 21st. I'll move on those, Mr. Chair. With second motion. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Public comment period. Any comments from members of the public? Thank you. Treasurer's report. Treasurer McBride. All right, we did the public comment. All right, that's uh, first of all, it, well, first one up and forward the testing. And See, I think sat down on Monday, went through, we had a few bills between COVID testing and PETA that hadn't come through in yet, so we'll add those as we go along. Uh, from COVID testing account, we transferred 40, 45000 to KEDA to uh, for cash flow. And, okay, we turn over, we have unpaid bill of $3,682.11, and that is for Midcontinent. Next page, we have a total of $19,977.51. Uh, those are monthly bills, airport commission, city of Maris Falls, Frontier, Jackson Electric. Uh, we have a fairly large one with Jackson Electric. That's for three months, plus that includes exhaust the equipment for uh, two exhaust portals in the old box, which we've been, we've been budgeted last year. We didn't get to, we had to do it this year, so All right. that's why it's so, yeah. And on the last page we have uh, from Frontier for internet access for $1,193. Was that all for cold weather, Tara? Yes. And the rest of those other bills will be submitted with Kia. So with that, I would, uh, I don't have the total. Did we get total, Tara, of all three of them? We should have that total up to $3,682, 19000 and uh, one thousand one ninety three. Any uh she's been told to get the total then. Oh. Twenty three thousand six fifty nine. Sixty two cents. Okay. I would move that total to be paid, bills paid for the month. All right, we have a motion for the uh, payment of, of uh, invoices. Second. Second. We have a second from from Mr. Hanson. We have a second from Mr. Hanson. Um, He's got the whitest hair. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. And Mr. Chair, I would just, we've submitted COVID testing uh, bills and finance report for your review, and we will file that with the administration for audit. We'll move on to Kita. Uh, we've got a large transfer to GLR. Uh, again, just an explanation, and I kind of get confused on one slide, but $183,277.38. Uh, GLR check came in, and it comes into Wells Fargo, because that is where JLR banks are net, or internationally, I guess. They can wire. So then we have to transfer that money out of Wells Fargo to our JLR account. And then from the JLR account, we, we transfer as needed to COVID testing or KEDA to pay bills. So that would move. That is now in our JLR account. Correct? So, unpaid bills. And the next page. Yeah, go ahead. Point of, should, so should there be a motion to transfer first? Uh, we, uh, we've never had, we've never, never had done that. Okay. It's just, just mechanics of, of, and we had to go that way because I mean, they're, if, they're wired. If the board or commission feels that we should be doing that, I, I, I don't have a problem with having a motion. But. Well, it is reflected in the report. Okay. And well, although we don't officially <coughs> approve the report, it, we acknowledge it. Thank you. Okay, so on the next page, unpaid bills of $44,106.68. Uh, 
take one portion of their salary and benefits again, that, that month, monthly bill. Uh, additions that came in late, we have a League of Minnesota Cities workers' compensation at $96 in Mid-Continent for $108.54. And there was another, the last one is uh, Marco, which is for a copier lease for $288.03. So, Tyra, you, can we total those up, please? $44,599.25. That's all of them. I would move that those bills be paid. Second. We have a motion and a second to pay the bills for uh, the Cooching Economic Development Authority. Further discussion? <laughs> one, one quick look. I mean, it's just a tiny thing, but Paul, what, what's the Trevor Bank? Gas, goggles, and supplies. Oh, that's the Google. Is it Google? Gas. Oh, gas, Google supplies. Yeah. Goggles. That's on the credit card. What? It's on the credit card. Okay. It's just to break down what. Oh, the gas would. All right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thought it said goggles. Close <laughs> <laughs> enough. You never know. Well, that's sure, that's, sure, that's, that's going to be on KCC, but I hope it's not in the journal. <laughs> All of us in favor of uh, yeah. paying the bill, uh, including the goggle bill. Um, <coughs> please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? And Mr. Chair, I thank you again. The finance report and bills are there for your review, and uh, we'll submit those to administration for audit. Thank you, Treasurer McBride. Move on to the uh, business park update. Mr. Chair, yeah, we uh, at the last meeting we uh, noted that we had scheduled uh, with the Planning and Zoning uh, Commission, City of International Falls, to submit our preliminary plat for their review. Uh, we've scheduled that meeting twice, and we've had to cancel due to lack of quorum. So a little frustrating that it's taken this long, but we're going to continue the process until we can get before that and get that plat. Um, preliminary plat approved, and then that moves on to the city. Um, we've had a lot of people review it, and we've had some modifications, but again, I think it's, it's, it's ready for review by the planning and zoning. So um, the other thing I would note, and I'm glad uh, Ricky Roach is here today with us because uh, uh, I had a chance to stop and check his progress, and his building looks great. Uh, they were pouring the floor, and they've been doing a lot of work. Uh, the weather, thankfully, you got covered so that you could continue working on it, but the, I know the weather's still making that road. Did you bringing in some fill as well? How many loads of fill have you been able to bring in? I don't know. I got all the 14th Avenue <laughs> from 11 Highway 11 to 11th Street. So we got four blocks of. Oh. Holman's brought me everything they took off 14th Avenue. Okay. So that's it's actually pretty much up to grade right now. We just got a. 14th Avenue. No, 14th Avenue. Oh, 14th Avenue. Here. Yeah. Okay. And then. Uh, so that worked out from. It worked out excellent. Okay. So we got about another six to eight inch. Overlay to put over top the parking lot. The parking lot will be pretty much done. Terrific. Yeah, it looks really good out there. And then at the same time, unfortunately, but we did work with the city and they're stubbing in water and sewer in the anticipation of extending those lots. So that work is being done, and I know it caused a little bit of a little, a little tight back there, but uh, uh, it's really getting tight. It's getting done. So I don't know if you wanted to add anything, Rick. Uh, no, nope. just we're working away. Looks good. They'll be back there. Uh, Starting the seventh of next month, all their equipment shows up. They got delayed on their conveyor belt equipment and stuff like that. Got your tenants. Yep, yep, yep. So they'll be there on October seventh, starting to put everything in. And their tentative plan is to be working out of there by the twenty eighth. Well, that's terrific. So we'll keep you posted, but that's that's good news. We're moving forward. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Eric. Good and good. Good film. Oh. It was all class five travel. <laughs> Couldn't ask for a better <laughs> bill. All right. Oh, Paul, one question. Paul, was there anything with like the other candidates that would, is that on hold? That would, uh, they're still reviewing, um, and I've not heard anything further about, about their decision making process when they will decide. Um, it's uh, the alternate building they're looking at, yes. But we will still 
we will still approach it the same way where those lots facing 2nd Avenue East will be zoned differently like a light uh, a business park or yeah. yeah, it won't be like commercial, it won't be industrial. All right, next item is the uh, budget review 2020. 20, 2020. Yes, Mr. <coughs> Chair, if you recall at the last meeting, I, I presented a kind of worst case scenario in terms of a budget um, which prompted us to uh, ask our partners, the city and the county, to defer our loan payment just to help with cash flow. And I'm, I'm just pleased that both city and county provided that. And so we'll make that loan payment from the co box in December. But what it also made us do was to go back and, and uh, present or, or look at a less worst case scenario. And that included, and really, it's driven by revenues from the cold weather side. We did had a lot of vacancies or schedules that were not confirmed um, since the last meeting. Uh, that has improved greatly. We've also cut back a number of expenses that, um, project expenses that we had put kind of on a wish list prioritized, but we'll, we'll push those off. Uh, that did not include the exhaust, which is represented in this. In this uh, so uh, I just provided a better case scenario with a better uh, beginning balance uh, in a better scenario through through the uh, through 2020. So that's what's before you now. But really, again, it's just going back and finessing some of the expenses, of, uh, project expenses, and revenue side from the cold weather. So. All right, uh, Paul. Yes. Question. Yeah. Now, as, as far on the income side, uh, if weather work. Is there, can we go live earlier? Is there any chance of people maybe coming in starting earlier on cold weather testing? Yes. Or, and that would, I mean, that's, that, that number can kind of fluctuate. Exactly. It could and be a plus or a minus if, depending on, on when you get go live. Exactly. The other part of that, too, is, again, in, in managing cash flow, a lot of the payments from the cold weather folks are 60 days plus, closer to 90 with some of our customers. And... So by the time we we realized those payments, you know, were well into in March, February, March. So it's, it's managing that first part of the, the season. Um, I would also note too that we will get our IRRB funds probably next month. Kyra, we've gone through the process, so we'll be receiving those, which will help, and that deferment will help too, just with that startup cash position. But we're anticipating now at the end of the year that we will have uh, 73. Um, or um, just just over a thousand dollars. I mean, it still would be very tight, um, but we will have a positive cash uh, position at the end of the year. So, so it is a balanced budget. But going forward, it's 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 going to require some 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 difficult decision making in terms of some of these projects or working with our partners to you know. And I'll, I'll touch on that in my report. All right. Any other questions or questions. comments? Is this preliminary, Paul, or, or would we move forward with this budget? Move forward with it? I, I, I feel comfortable moving it forward if... Yeah, I, I don't know if the commission would want to move forward with now or, or wait until next week. I, I think this, this January, September is when we approve the budget. Correct. I'd entertain a motion. <laughs> Move. And a second. We have a motion and a second to approve this as the next year's budget. Further discussion? Yes, Mayor well, Anderson. I guess, um, Paul, I, I'm wondering if rather than being tight on our cash flow, would we be better off to have the city and county hold off until March or April? And, and making that payment? Today. I'm anticipating now, just given what I see coming, that we'll be fine. Uh, we'll be fine this, with, with this. We get a varied amount from IRRR minus because we never know how strong production is. Yeah, it's usually a couple of years or, or at least a year plus before that formula is made and, and the actual calculation is. So based on current production, we should be we should be pretty good in the next year, yeah. Mr. Chair, 
Yeah. And with, with what the mayor's saying is, I mean, obviously the city and county both elected to delay the payment to December. I, I, I don't see, and discussions we had, I didn't see any real big problem with the county or the city if we shattered it, extended out a little bit into 2020, but I mean, obviously we still need the income too. Or yes. that, that, that loan back. We, we may have to look at that again uh, next year just to see, see, but the way we're projecting it now, we, we, we should be good into that payment this December. Mm -hmm. and then. So you think about maybe even moving the payment to the end of the year rather than? We, we may next year again yeah, just to help with uh, manage that cash flow. Okay. Yeah. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Continue um, with your director's report. A couple items to touch on uh, our Kuching Technology Initiative and the Bland and Broadband Initiative. Uh, working with the KTI team, uh, Paul Bunyan has submitted a grant application to DEED uh, for that border to border grant pro program to provide fiber to the premises uh, internet service to the underserved areas of Cooch. Uh, that includes the Pelham Junction Papermaker area and the Ericsburg Rogers Corner areas. Um, Paul Bunyan is seeking uh, just over a million dollars from the, the grant program. They will be spending, um, Paul Bunyan that is, 1.4 uh, for the project. Um, and as part of the grant application, we got a number of letters of support, and this is significant because a number of households affected and, and the way it will help the whole, um, I guess, the whole connectivity of that of, of the providers and the homeowners, but this this will help hit those gaps. Um, but to further bolster that the application that was suggested by Paul Bunyan and other uh, communities and counties have submitted or have contributed dollars, and so the KTI representatives went before the county board asking to pledge twenty six thousand dollars for the project, and that's based on the fact that they are successful in their grant application and it wouldn't be payable till next year. And if all goes well and those, everything falls into place, construction uh, for this would begin in probably 2021. So it's hugely significant. It affects a lot of folks um, and it will really increase um, uh, the coverage of, of high speed, not just dial up, this is gonna be high speed. So it's, it's, been, uh, it's been good work, this partnership, and, and having the county step up and, and provide those funds is, is, I think, will go a long, long way. So we're very excited about that. I'm only doing it because eventually I want to get it up the lake. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's, that's the other part of this, Wade, is this is the evolution of that. And we're talking to the other providers about these other areas, including west, the gap between Moment and Birchdale, the lake. Um, yeah. We've got, we've, got so, we've got so many people here in the summer that uh, I mean, we can do a business the way they need it. And that, state well, it's absolutely necessary now. I mean, people used to, you know, they'd come from vacation and leave their phones at home, and, but not anymore. They work right through. Right from home. Absolutely. And uh, that's, a, that's a vital part of where they choose to vacation. Yeah. What they what they choose to do. There are lots of ways now, you know, with hot spots and things like that you can do, but nothing beats high speed. You know. Right. And you've got like commercial businesses up there and you've got density of households, which makes it attractive. So we're hoping that, and again, just having this group in place, talking to these providers, providing survey data, you know, making it a front page issue that I think will help drive it, but it is frustrating, you know. That especially in this day and age, that just the expectations of visitors that they'll have connectivity. Oh, we're supporting this. It's a good first step here. Question Has the county considered raising the height limit for towers at all? Well, I was just going to piggyback, but then the commissioner will have something first, and then we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. All right. Is it, you want to... Well, I just said that uh, Tendry Tell has made a big investment out. In the western part of the county, and uh, with the help of some legislation uh, requiring state parks to have better Wi Fi, they, uh, it's been completely rewired all the way to Frangevney Park from Bedette 
and by the end of this year, it'll be past the end of school. So it's going to give the end of school multiple choices to them. Very good. Yes. Uh, well, we do see now that there are antennas on the tower at the uh, Rennick Houseboats. I believe it's AT and T. Uh, we continue to uh, struggle in that Birch Point area and the western side of International Falls with Verizon. And I think it's about four years ago we had a conditional use permit to Verizon or to some company to put two small towers in there. I think they're only 100, 150 footers to enhance that coverage. And we haven't heard from them since. And it continues to be an issue for, for people in those areas. The sure. paper makers area and the mall or you know, and then point of point of lines is I mean it's a dead spot there for three miles. There's nothing. Yeah. And I, I don't know, we we just we've had no luck with even figuring out who to talk to. Yeah. And at least Brian and I have committed we're not gonna issue any more permits unless we they give us a timeline for getting the equipment. Unless what? And unless they give us a timeline oh. for getting the equipment up and getting it operational. Yeah. Because yeah. here again we approve these permits with a Understanding that they were going to go to work and get you know sure. make an improvement here, and they've done nothing for years. Sure. Very frustrating. Just like the one at the uh, Thunderbird, or but that's up and running now, right? Finally, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That took many years. And that's AT and T. I believe it's AT and T. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is frustrating. They are but, uh, huge uh, mega corporations that. No. Look at the bottom line and not where it comes from. <laughs> is, is it the Railroad Services or the county that issues a conditional use permit for a tower? The county. But it is the county. Through, but we do it through. So, and, uh, and once things settle down a little bit, I mean, Matt is very, very busy with the sewer project, but yeah. we may need to get Matt back involved because Dale also was doing it before and, and really tried to yeah. push Verizon or whoever the tech company is to, to see if we need some service there. It's needed. Yeah. Well, that brings me back to my question about the height of the towers. It would seem that if the tower height were increased, you would have wider coverage. Correct. But once you go to 199 feet, once you go to 199 plus 6 inches, you, then you need to light the tower. You need strobes. Yeah. You stay at 199, you don't need strobes, you don't need lights, and that becomes an issue to the public when, once you put lights on. I understand. but. Yeah. Uh, this is a new era, yep. and everyone depends on cell phones. So uh, I know that you had, that you've gotten pushback from people and oh, neighbors, wow. and I understand that. That's they need to be respected also. But um, their view is, is their view is they're up there to avoid those types of things, you know. So I mean, it's finding that balance. So we we've, we've gone as high as we can without. Brian pointed out going to those. Well, and, and I think Verizon con continues to just sit on top of the Ranger Tower. With yeah. Yeah. And, new, and that's owned by the DNR, I believe. And they don't know how long they're going to allow this to go on. And eventually, that tower is going to have to come down. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, and, you know, part of that tower limit was uh, also that satellite would be the next carrier instead of towers. Um, everyone expected that to happen probably five, six years ago, and so far it has. So. Well, what's, what's his name? Who's the rocket man? You're going to put 24,000 satellites up here to <laughs> cover the world with cell coverage. Yeah. All right. Uh, move on. Just in a follow up to KTI team up with Bill Coleman from. He's kind of a broadband guru for the state. Uh, he's been working with us to we started down this uh, process of the intelligent community forum benchmarking, and basically it's a, an opportunity to ask around six six areas measures of your community's um, competitiveness in the digital world. So it's just kind of a scorecard on how you rate, and, and we're doing this for the county, and you're compared to a bunch of other communities and counties actually across, across the globe, and it's just another way. To just bring information to the providers and to the general public about investment and about where we stand compared to others, and it's just a competitive benchmark. So anyway, it's a, it's a good process to go through, and we're filling that out as we go. 
Uh, I just have a question. I'm noticing. Is everyone mad at the mayor? He's over there all by himself. <laughs> I did. Bob, I had to come in and sat next. Right. And it sat next to you, but I got to have my back. <laughs> I just noticed that. Uh, it uh, it could reflect the other side too, or it's out of great respect that we allow. <laughs> that's that's the way to look at it. A uh, couple of other items: uh, cold weather testing or schedule, as I mentioned earlier, starting to fill up. Uh, and again, it's a good mix of repeat customers. We've got several new customers, which I'm pleased. Uh, again, this is all word of mouth, no advertising to, to bring those folks in. We had a site visit yesterday and back from a new customer. We wanted to just make sure that they could conduct what they want to do here, and they came away very positive that they could. And then uh, we'll have representatives from JLR on the ground here tomorrow uh, doing an annual kind of a review and an audit of, of the facility. So. Uh, Good news there. Uh, under miscellany, uh, and I touched on this earlier, the marketing your ticket home reboot. We're continuing to work with uh, Big Fish Digital uh, to develop a relaunch of this campaign, the Your Ticket Home. Um, and we've worked up a draft uh, template, standalone kind of website that will have a survey tool, uh, current job listings, and business opportunities that are for sale. Um, and then once we establish this and get people to give us their contact information, then we will continually reach out to them uh, several times a month with social media to again give them updates on what's happening in the area, opportunities, um, uh, just constant reminders that there's, there's ways that you can relocate back to the area. And it's interesting, I included in your packets, there's a, a move throughout the state and well throughout the country about relocating to rural areas and there's a number of different initiatives on how to get there so this kind of aligns and we've been talking about this for, for some time now but this is what it looks like if we can yeah I pressed share and it said not connected our new technology here at the airport you'll, you'll note uh, Commissioner Hansen, that there is a rainbow, but this time it falls over Little Fork. Oh no, you see way to the west end. <laughs> There's another one going up. Uh, can we scroll down then? Uh, so that'll be the launch page. That's our, oh, oh, go back up if you would just quickly. Uh, that's our old, kind of our, our logo. We're working on that. It's a little bit too cartoonish. We want to update it. But it's essentially the same thing. It's a, it's a transitioning out of the cities. We're going to have a, a picture, hopefully, of, of uh, traffic jam. And then uh, somebody sitting on a dock or in a, in a, on a pontoon boat. Basically, it's a quality of life thing that we're really selling and get, trying to get people to remind you that you don't have to fight traffic if, if you decide to uh, uh, your ticket home. Let's. And then just a, a, an introductory kind of what we're, what we're trying to do. Uh, we're trying to keep this very simple, very short, so people can get on here. And we want them to ultimately take the survey. And if they take the survey and complete it, if we go down further, um, again, we want to make it real visual. Um, uh, upcoming events will be a part of that. Um, all these are evocative images of what we like about living here. And that was the whole concept here. We haven't filled in some of the content. And we're going to work with Big Fish on a lot of the news content and, and updates and what's happening. And then uh, if you go down to the bottom, we can hit the survey, or we may have the survey tab. I think we're still playing around with the architecture of this, but when you go to the survey, it's just basic questions, you know, um, some contact information, household members, what your occupation currently is, have you visited or lived in Cooch, your desired occupation, salary range, um, those types of things. And if you fill that in, then you go to a, a contest where if you're selected, you win a plane ticket back to uh, Cooch County and uh, we'll, we'll play a lot of that up and have media around that and then really uh, relaunch this in, in a proper manner. And, and so I'm kind of pleased with where we're at. It's going to take uh, some additional work, but uh, Kyra and Joanne and I have been working, and it's kind of fun. This was a creative piece. But anyway, we don't want to be just another uh, website. This is going to be uh, something that, that we hope will, will get a lot of people's attention and we'll build a good database. And again, then the work begins to continue to touch up, uh, reach out to them. So, so that's some work to go, but we got, we're off to a good start. So.
there's any questions on that. Any questions for about the All right. I love when technology works. Uh, we've received a couple of requests for proposals from site selectors looking for um, their, on behalf of customers that are looking for locations to relocate a business, two businesses. Um, these are nationwide, so we don't check all the boxes, but the fact that we have been, uh, they've reached out to us and we're on their radar, so we'll, we'll respond to those uh, RFPs um, and uh, report, uh, report on the follow-up if we get any response. Do it's they, a good exercise to go through, too. Do they ever tell you how many inquiries they're sending out? No. They just said that it's a nationwide search or it's a Midwest search. Uh, if it's defined, but the one thing that sets us apart was the uh, rail was a big component of it, um, and land is an incentive. They said, you know, in terms of incentive, not necessarily, you know, cash and uh, taxes. Or it, it said if, if there's land available as an incentive, that was a that checked the box. So, um, and as I said, it's a good exercise to go through, you know, providing your sites. Um, giving information on the area, you know, uh, all the things that are, um, that are part of their requirements. Yeah, kind of updating your asset. Right, yep. And um, Kmart follow-up, you know, it got a lot of uh, attention, obviously, when the announcement about Kmart closing, and um, a lot of uh, residents are, you know, concerned, and so there's some expectations that we've done some research on on some potential retailers that might fill that space. That's 83,000 square feet of retail space. 83,000? 83, 83,000 on six acres. It's a big building. Um, I know the mayor touched on it in his, his uh, remarks at the lunch and learn about the update on the city that we're going to reach out to some of these retailers. But I want to be clear about expectations. It's, it's um, market forces drive all of these decisions. And we obviously put up uh, uh, again, like the RFPs, we'll put up a good presentation and information on our area. I think the most important thing to any retailer that's looking here is to make sure that they understand the Canadian marketplace. I mean, when we draw that circle, it's 25 to 40 miles north. It, it doesn't stop at the border. That there is a population I mean, testimony to the, the money that's spent at Menards and the lumber yards here in town. I mean. They're shipping lumber up to, you know, great great distances, and so uh, that marketplace is much larger than the just the net population. So, um, Deer Falls, Red Lake. Yep. Yep. And I, I think that one gentleman, I think that's he's contracted to haul lumber. I think that's all he does is probably does Canadian uh, routes. So, um, Mayor. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, and I would I would say that. Uh, it's easily uh, much larger than 40 to 50 miles because I know it, uh, I, I go to Menards to, to see my cousins coming from Atacokan, so I, I know that uh, that that's, that is an attraction in itself, that, that story. So, um. And it's, it's also, you know, what's happening in retail nationally. I mean, look at Herberger's closing, some of these big name Sears, um, that again, it's market forces and it's, it's consumers and, and Amazon, the influence of, of that online shopping, that's, it's, it's challenging to overcome, but um, you, you just can't get a lot of the items that Kmart certainly provides from some other retailers. So it's, it's trying to find, uh, well, anybody that would invest and in, reinvest in our community, but somebody that can provide all of those items. Um, and that's our hope. And, um, again, it's, uh, you know. It's true. Yes. But yesterday, Commissioner Pavlik and I met with a gentleman from Thunder Bay that's looking looking to relocate, possibly. And we talked about uh, you know the northeastern Cooch County and the Fort Francis area. And you know, we're talking thirty thousand people. I mean, it, it, for a retailer, that's a pretty good pretty good group of people to service. You know, it's not just International Falls with six thousand people. I mean, it's it's a big area. Yeah, I think what comes into play um, at times with uh, some of the uh, retailers is their ability to, uh, to 
to get goods here at a reasonable price. Transportation uh, is great. Transportation is an issue. And I think that's what really, I'm probably being a little out on the limb here, but, but I, I think that's probably what got Kmart was that there were no stores between here and the Twin Cities. And you've got partial loads, uh, yeah. you, know, you, can, you can stop at several stores and, and, and unload, but if there's no store between <coughs> the Twin Cities and here, you're talking 300 miles of shipments. The one that lived closed three or four years ago. I mean, I think Virginia we were, closed Virginia. were pretty fortunate that they kept it. Right. Is there there. one Kmart left in the state? St. Paul. St. Paul. And a, one on Lake Street, I thought, right? Yeah. And, and yeah, that is the strength of even those retail markets like Duluth, the fact that they lost, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that says a lot, but you're right. It's, it's I, mean, I think the, the whole retail industry is trying to figure out what what is the picture of tomorrow in, in retail? And uh, you know, certainly uh, shipments uh, within a day are going to continue to play a, play a figure, uh, play a role in that. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon, Amazon issue, and, and, you know, and that's just the suppliers and, and it's opportunities for other people. You know, I think you know, Target has gotten into, that, into right. that market now, and they're, yeah. they're providing uh, Took them a while, next day server, yes. Yeah. And the only problem with that is it doesn't create any jobs for us. There's, it's just job loss. Money going out of the community. Correct. The, uh, I know the one magazine that, uh, and I should bring a copy of that, but uh, speaking to the point that Paul made uh, um, on closing, uh, their best estimate for 2019, for 2019 was at 5,000 stores Gap, Old Navy, J.C. Penney, yeah. um, some of those others that you mentioned, uh, Herberger's, and that, those stores are closing. It's across the whole country, 5,000 stores closing, but it's significant. Yeah. And, you know, five years ago, you would have said, well, that, they're bulletproof. I mean, you can't, you know, like a Herberger's, I mean, come on. But, yeah, that's the reality that they have to operate under in this, yeah, free shipping, next day shipping. Well, then you're, you're putting together a packet uh, that we can take to uh, uh, some retailers. And yep. And we've reached out, I've reached out to, to well, well, one for sure already, just to, to start the process. But I want, I want them to know about, you know, about us and, and with the best available information. Other discussion? Comment? Uh, and just one last thing. I, I did have a chance to meet with uh, Brian Hansen and... Uh, Matt Chermot, uh, who's now a part of Apex, talk about what's happening in the region, some of the work they do, some of what we do, and just, again, kind of partner where we can with, with them and, and uh, talk about economic development in the region. So, with that. Do you want to just uh, give a brief explanation of Apex? Oh, yeah, certainly. I'm sorry. Yes. It's, Apex is a regional economic development group that's private, They're meaning that they're funded by uh, business organizations, Minnesota Power is a big uh, contributor. They service the whole region, they provide, if, you, if you're a member, but they, they also are kind of a lead. Um, uh, they do a lot of promotion in, in, for the region. They, to be uh, brutally honest, they, they focus primarily on the Duluth Superior, that's where they've had their most success, Duluth Superior area. Um, but they go to a lot of trade shows, they partner with DEED. Um, so they get a lot of, uh, a lot of visibility. Um, uh, so it's always good to at least have that relationship with them and now that Matt's part of that group, uh, you know, talk a little bit about Cooch when, when opportunities arise. So. Good. Any other? Yes, Mayor? Well, I, I guess, I, Paul, I'd, I'd like to hear from you and Joanne with regard. The uh, Duluth Sunday paper had a uh, article about the Northland Foundation taking over the Small Business Development uh, Corporation. And I think you had mentioned it before. Um, I guess I, for one, don't understand uh, UMD moving it over to Northland. I don't understand Northland taking it. I, I wonder if there's advantages, uh, if there's any disadvantages uh, in all of this. And maybe you don't know. I know uh, uh, it's probably a, a difficult question. But in some ways, I'd like to uh, invite uh, uh, Tony Sertich to, to come up to a meeting here and, uh, and, and 
talk about that, but also maybe just talk about uh, economic development in, in northern Minnesota. Joanne can probably um, get further, yeah. but but they are, it's one of their major components of the mission, correct? Yep. Yeah, I think part of the reason um, that they found that the Northland Foundation um, would be a better partner is um, for leveraging collaboration among um, different groups for funding purposes. Um, so I don't know if, and I, again, I don't know a lot about um, this piece of it, but I don't know if UMD was um, kind of put into a corner where they couldn't do a lot of that funding and collaboration where the Northland Foundation um, has more um, visibility, more sources, things like that, and partnerships um, for, uh, you know, providing funding. Um, they had to provide $300,000 um, to take over SBDC. 150000 was in kind directly from the Northland Foundation. And then the other 150000 can be um, made up of those different partnerships. Um, so, like right now, UMD is, um, they're letting um, the folks that still work in Duluth in that office, they're going to keep that office there. And that's part of their contribution, I believe, as, you know, a, a partner in this. The, how many uh, consultants are in the region through the, in the old format with, the, with the UMD? I want to say about 20. Um, there's some that everybody, all the consultants are a little bit different. Some are completely full-time SBDC. Uh, some are just contractors that work maybe 10 hours a week. Um, and then, you know, like me, it's kind of, you know, so we're all, all of our contracts are a little bit different um, throughout the area depending on what's needed. Well, it's, it's been a long-time partnership. And I know, Alan, you go way back with it when it was at Rainy River. It was a quarter-time position or something. And... I think it's a much needed position and and I'm a little alarmed at the way this was rolled out, the communication or lack thereof. I mean they didn't reach out to us as a long time funding partner and 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 tell us what was going on. It was just kind of done very it was strange way it occurred. So I Tony presented at ARDC not too long ago talking about the uh, Northland Foundation, but I don't think it would be a bad idea to invite him up here and talk about how he sees the relationship moving forward, and if it if it might change at all, or he'd be glad to come. Yeah, no, he would. And yeah. and I don't think I mean as far as what I've heard, I mean we want to you know keep everything exactly the same. Uh, he doesn't plan on you know changing what we're doing or you want to see, but I think, but he really wants to expand what we're doing. Um, so I think that that's part of this partnership and funding is possibly getting more funds and partners um, across the state or across the region um, to do more work, whether it's doing trainings like um, the Entrepreneur um, Fund, they do a lot of different trainings um, and work with their loan applicants. That would be something that, you know, the Northland Foundation could possibly do. And I, I believe that we're not, the Northland Foundation is not the only initiative foundation that has taken over SBDC. I think in the western side, there was one other initiative foundation that took over um, the SBDC uh, of their region. So it's becoming, I don't want to say more of a trend, but to get away from the education community? Yeah. But, but they're going to keep the office at UMD? Yes. And is that because uh, Northland doesn't have room for the office? Or? Partially, yeah, and partially because it, it's always, it's been there for so long, people know exactly where it is. Um, they still want that visibility, and they still want, you know, people coming in and, you know, all that. Um, but I believe they're going to um, share that space um, with a couple other um, offices. Well, it, it's not at UMD. It was UMD space in the technology village. Downtown. Building, right? Y yeah. Yes. Downtown. Oh, okay. So it's, it's not, not on the college. No, no, no. Campus. No, it's no. it's downtown. Oh, it's on the yeah, it's in the technology village. It has been there for twenty years. Yeah. Um, and will UMD still have a presence in? The, I believe that they're going to. They're continuing education, whatever they do. I think yeah, I think they're still going to be a, a partner, but okay. again. 
you know, they're not going to be the main. Right. They're kind of stepping back from that role and letting the North, Northland Foundation fill in, but they're, you know, still in support of um, the SBDC. Well, one other follow-up from this change is that it affects uh, Joanne's ability to serve on the Northland Foundation board, being now that she will be a cons business consultant. They just felt there's kind of a conflict there, so they've asked that, that you step down. Yeah, so, so I you had will have to resign. I yeah, I had I put in my letter of resignation, wow. so I have to resign um, from the Northland Foundation because it's a conflict of interest because the Northland Foundation is I'm a contractor basically. So I it. would be willing to extend an invitation if you would prepare a letter. Mm -hmm. I'll sign it. I'll also uh, call Tony. Um, just because I like to do that. <laughs> no, I think that'd be great. Uh, thank you for doing that. Um, so yeah, if we can get him to come to a October, November, December sure. meeting somewhere in there. Um, I, and now, Kita pays part of the SBDC salary and costs. Correct. And so we have a partnership with contractual. Okay. Yep. Up to so many hours that they'll pay for it. So great. Yep. And I'm assuming that that will be the same with the Northland Foundation. They will have a, will have a contract that, that states kind of the parameters. Yeah, and I believe those parameters are going to be very similar. Um, that was one thing, like, because they had talked to me and said, well, you know, how is this relationship going to work? And, you know, could you, you know, I, I'm like, well, we have a board, and I can't just say, no, you know, we don't want to be part of the SBDC because I know that we do. So I said, you know, I'm going to just have to re resign from, you know, the board. So is that going to change any of our agreement with the SBTC <coughs> or anything that, I mean, because now, I mean, we used to work with UMD. Did we have a written agreement or a yes. joint powers or anything? So now that's going to have to transfer to Northland. Correct. So we, as a board, we may have officially enter into that agreement. Yep. Right. And it was supposed to take over, you know, in January, but then they requested, um, UMD requested that they take over earlier. So now the Northland Foundation will take over the transition will be October 15th. That will be their start date. Um, so we will have a new website and then um, the letter of for the SBDC will go in front of the Northland Foundation board on October 3rd and they will approve the whole um, transfer. Yeah, trans tran yeah, transition. So we will look for a new contract through the Northland Foundation to supply the services. So we we will advocate that it remains similar, if not identical. To and I think the reason why they haven't come with a contract, Mike SFP, is because it hasn't been approved officially by the board yet that we accept that transition. Who's who's for? The Northland Foundation. Oh. The Northland Foundation has to approve. Formally approve it. Formally approve. <coughs> the letter um, from uh, the state with the SBDC and all that saying. Well, it sounds like it's a done deal whether it's formal or not, right? Yeah. The board could reject it. And well, I understand that. Right, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so that's why they haven't done all these contracts yet, all right. is my, my guess. Sure, and, and I guess just to understand uh, these are federal dollars that, that come into the region, is that correct? They're okay. from yeah. the Small Business Administration. Okay. Okay. Each state is allocated and then the allocation from the state goes to the regions and then it's divvied up that way. Okay. And, and I mean, I really think that the, uh, the role that uh, Joanne plays in working with retail to our previous conversation, I think you know there's certainly a challenge for small business and retail in the world today, and, and so I really think that it's an important one. But and then back to the board member, if I may, Mr. Chair, I guess um, have we ever had a board member from International Falls on the Northland Foundation prior to Joanne? I was. What were you on there? Okay. Or I think uh, what are the term limits? Eight years. Yeah. I think, I think yes. I was on there for eight years. Okay, right. very good. From uh, just after Tom Rainier was was appointed as the director, so it, maybe two or three years into the existence of it, I was on. And you can only serve certain, and then you can't you, you can't 
return. In other words, you can't. It, it always has to be a, a turnover. Right. Yeah. Well, and that would be another question for uh, Mr. Sertich would be, you know, with with uh, Joanna having to leave because she's got kind of an employee status or will have an employee status. Um, you know, is there someone that we can find up here that, that would be willing to serve on that on that foundation board? I mean, I think it's I, great, I asked great that, to have that going to you. Okay? I asked that question. I said, well, you know, are you going to, how, you know, how is this going to work? And they said, well, right now um, they have seats where you, you know, they can have so many or so few, you know, they kind of, um, their board fluctuates in numbers at times. So, um, and they don't want to do it right now. We're kind of in the, in the middle of a term. So they're going to wait until the next term where they go for applicants and then they'll go for an extra applicant at that term. So anybody can apply and we can, if we know somebody that, you know, we feel is representative, then, you know, we should definitely have them apply um, to be on the board. Very good. Thank you for your... Any other questions, comments? we we'll move to, uh, I know people have to leave. Uh, we'll move to uh, city county update. Uh, we'll start with uh, the county. I'll, I'll pass for a moment. All right. We're getting back. Getting back. Uh, Northland is still looking at obviously the um, building there in the, in the small yeah. stuff. and uh, so we would see building. Uh, they haven't ruled out the business park, and I, I could have brought it up then, but I'm not really sure. No. At this point, that's their number one choice for location mm -hmm. for a number of reasons. One of the major ones being close proximity to their other facility, just right, you know, kind of across the road there in, in Sherwood. Uh, so at this point, it's just a matter of uh, whether it works, because you're going to have to do some huge modifications to that big building to make it fit for North Town Council. Uh, and part of that may be you know, literally having the size of it uh, rather than have all that excess space. The point being, you know, it still preserves an existing building. It doesn't matter if it's International Falls or Little Park or North Home. You don't want empty buildings, you know, on Main Street. To, to, to there. If that doesn't work, though, the, the, next, uh, the next choice would be the, uh, the site <laughs> we've got out there by Rick. So. So we'll see where that goes. We're going to know more about that next month. They're doing some, you know, field testing and structural uh, engineering inspections and things like that to see if it's feasible to uh, cut in half. They are a huge employer in the county, though, and we certainly want them to to continue. It just it just doesn't end, and they'll never run out of business at the rate we're going. So. Sure. That's it. That's it for Mayor, uh, Commissioner. Uh, Will the grant that they have from Department of Health and Human Services, uh, will, will that allow them to, to utilize it there? Well, it'll help. I mean, you know, that's, funding's always an issue too, but we're in pretty, we're pretty good shape, I think, to, okay. to put this together, whether we build or, or renovate the existing UHC building. We've got, we've, got the, we've got a good team there that work on this. Well, I've been the chairman there for many years, so. I'm involved in, in especially this uh, situation, but they're the ones who know, you know, what's best for the, you know, the company, so to speak, to make make sure things work for the long term. That's what they're looking at. But it's very much a needed service yeah. in, in this area. The, the, the other side of that is that's a lot of uh, space and jobs moving out of the Bacchus, which Brian and I work hard. And, other commissioners to keep full and keep moving and going. So, you know, it's it's got its drawbacks, but that is just no longer, it just cannot serve the needs of NCC. So that's, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. It becomes a problem for Bacchus, but it also creates opportunity. Yep. You know, so there's room now for a new tenant. And yeah, that's space too. Yep. Okay. Mayor from the city. Well, um, as uh, Executive Director Nevin has pointed out the uh, Kmart closing has uh, certainly caused a reverberation in the community and, and uh, we're working to, to talk to several uh, potential businesses that, that, that might be interested in coming this way. So I know that that's, that's underway. Um, we did the city update last week. Uh, 
the Chamber of Commerce Lunch and Learn, uh, that went very well. The um, census uh, coming up next April is certainly uh, very big for this whole area, very big for the city, uh, and so uh, continuing to uh, pay attention to that. I know that the, uh, the state has got uh, grants, of, uh, they're small grants, but you can, if you have a, a census committee and looking at that possibility right now, uh, you can you can apply for a $750 grant to help market uh, the census, and uh, so that uh, that's a good move. Um, the uh, the other thing uh, this evening uh, we'll be making a presentation to um, the Minnesota House of Representatives Capital Investment Division at the Masabi uh, Range College, uh, uh, Commissioner. Uh, Airport Commissioner Nevinen and our Executive Secretary uh, uh, Kyra Hasbargen will be uh, joining me as well as our consulting engineer from the airport, uh, Sean McMahon, and uh, we'll be making a presentation there this evening. Um, we're, we're looking for a million and a half dollars in bonding monies from the state uh, for the runway and taxiway reconstruction to help with the city county share of that project. So that, that goes on this evening. The last thing I'd like to uh, talk about is the, uh, uh, the city has been working for about six years with the Minnesota Department of Transportation on uh, Highway 53 coming into town. And, and by October the 23rd, the city has to enter into, a, uh, into what's called a municipal consent agreement with uh, MnDOT. And um, for the most part, I think um, all of the issues uh, with business owners, residents have been resolved, but there's one item left. And uh, I'd like to pass these out. Uh, this is just some information that I had uh, put together back in. Uh, And, and the issue is uh, on Highway 53 as it intersects with 7th Street and the uh, MnDOT has told the city that they will not participate in a uh, signal light at that location. They want to eliminate the uh, Stop and go like that, uh, that's there. Um, two businesses, uh, Northern Lumber, I visited with them again yesterday, and the letter here uh, that's attached is from Lakes Gas. Um, they both are asking that the uh, light, the signal light, be kept. And um, in discussions with MnDOT, uh, they said, uh, well, even if the city wanted to pay for the light, which they would now require because they're saying there's not enough traffic coming out of 7th Street. Um, the, they won't even allow us to put one there, even if we pay for it. And of course that can become a, a negotiated item under this municipal consent agreement. Uh, you know, I certainly don't want to hold up the project, but at the same time um, we've got a couple of businesses that are asking um, they're investing money in the community. Uh, Lakes Gas uh, purchased some old garages on 2nd Avenue, tore them down, put in a, uh, a new 50,000-gallon uh, 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 storage uh, tank there. Um, they're now going to be, as he points out, uh, Mr. Schenk, uh, that they're going to be bringing rail cars into that site and unloading them into those tanks. Further, they're going to be taking 18-wheeler um, semi-transports and loading them up there and taking uh, LP gas to uh, Cook and Virginia and Orr and Bedette and other cities out of here. So uh, they need uh, truck drivers. Um, they see it as a uh, dangerous situation to have to pull out there. Uh, the city has got the city garage there, we have uh, loaders and graders and large dump trucks and that pulling out at 7th Street. Uh, Northern Lumber um, 
is talked about the uh, the possibility of putting up a new warehouse on the uh, southeast corner where the present holiday gas station is and so all of that together just says uh, that I think that the city and uh, county and and Keita, I guess I would like to have letters of support from this organization to the city council uh, with regard to the keeping of this light and, uh, and for the businesses. I mean, uh, seldom do businesses ask for something um, from, you know, except in, the, in a way of infrastructure and keeping good infrastructure. I just think that uh, that the light uh, is a positive thing. And, and would ask uh, this uh, authority to uh, send a letter to the city in support of keeping that signal light at 7th Street. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, discussion? I just asked Paul to compose that letter and, you know, with the help of the city, but number one, stress the safety. That's the first thing. Okay. And then, then the business aspect after, but the safety of that intersection of tankers and, and Plow trucks and graders crossing needed to service the community. That's you, you got to look to number one. Yes. And Mr. Chairman, uh, would it be all right if, uh, if uh, the same thing was sent to our representatives and senator, to state senators, so that that would be very helpful. Some, very helpful. Some impact. Yes. Because well, I'm certain we're going to have to play some political card, I guess I'll call it, um, with MnDOT if. Um, if right now, I don't know how dug in they are, but they just said, uh, we won't allow you to put up a light. Well, I mean, that's one thing said, but it's another thing done. So they have but to, they offered you one time a roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> like me, like the one at Hipping, when I went to pick my wife up, I ended up halfway to Coal Arena before I figured out that I was going the wrong way. <laughs> is is, is uh, MnDOT's rationale for not having a light there simply uh, traffic count. Yep. Okay. They yeah. were they were not going to continue a light at 11th Street either, but they decided with the schools at the other end and school buses using that uh, that they would uh, continue sure. the light there at 11th Street and that they would uh, pay for the cost and and the cost of the putting up a light like that is 250 thousand. So it's not something. You know, mm -hmm. And I, I have to tell you, I don't have the city council uh, hasn't taken a position at this point. Uh, so, uh, but I think uh, as a organization in support of business, and, uh, and certainly uh, safety is a primary uh, concern. And and Northern Lumber has uh, half a dozen or more eighteen wheelers pulling up and and uh, unloading uh, at their store. And, uh, here again, it's a small business in the community. Every, every, every day. day. Yeah. Pardon? Every day. Every day. Yeah, yeah we could take sure to, to have issues on 50, Highway 53, near intersection of County Road 332, with logging trucks, and we talked to MnDOT about slowing down whatever, trying to, to, to make that safe for that intersection. And they pretty much tell you MnDOT on state highways is to move traffic, not to stop traffic. So that's the issue that you have there. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you. Um, the end of the rainbow representative. I'll be very brief, Mr. Chair. Uh, once upon a time, <laughs> Little Fork is wrapping up their sewer and water project. They're beginning dirt work on the site between a liquor store and a community building. And they're going to put a 30 foot gazebo right in that area, and they're hoping to have it done. Uh, before the next all school reunion uh, they're also finishing uh, sewer pond improvements and they're planning to do improvements to the community building itself and make it more event friendly uh, north Ohm is ahead of schedule with their water and sewer project they are part of the bland and growing community project uh, they have a new superintendent in the district which of course includes indus and they've been meeting with the senior state scenic byway committee what is the superintendent's name well, I knew you were going to ask. Oh. It was in the paper. Yes, no. yes. Evidently not. Yes. Oh, no, it's not Jerry. It's not Jerry. Oh, sorry, him. Oh, no, no, no. That's who replaced him. Um, Karen's or Steve Karen's or something like that. And then, He's from Bagley. And then yeah. at the last uh, 
progressive meeting. Yeah. Yeah. North, yeah. North Holmes whole main street is torn up because of them, I assume. Yeah, they got renters and annual apartments and the whole, whole thing. Big Falls, uh, the bids are left for the civil portion of the campground project. Evidently, they've got a lot of the permits in place. The next bids are for the uh, architectural that will be handled later this year. Uh, anybody want to buy a fine store, there's one for sale right in downtown Big Falls, Bill Gordon's hardware store. And it's just because of Bill wanting to retire. Now, there's six apartments upstairs, and they do a pretty brisk business on a daily basis there. Nobody, nobody has an interest in opening the cafe, huh? Nobody's at what? The cafe, still, it's still vacant, right? Well, I can tell you that the residents who lived there wish there was. Yeah. Um, yeah, I visited that store when we had a meeting down there. And I loved that old it, general, business store, general store atmosphere, yeah. you know. This organization back in the day made a contribution to the cafe so it could be built. And then here it is close. All right, any further comments? Any questions of Mr. Hansen? Next item is the public comment period. Do we have a, any comments? I'll just give a quick um, update on our um, child care initiative team. Um, we are still um, working on the Little Fork site um, to put a provider in there. Um, um, well, it needs some renovations, um, like a second exit, uh, some things like that uh, for safety measures, so we're looking at um, doing that. Um, Frostbite Finds is closing and moving out of the Kutaska building, and um, I talked with uh, Maureen Rosado, their uh, executive director, and I said, what if we could put a provider in that space? And she said, great idea, let's do it. And they were able to look in their storage and find basically all the furnishings that a provider would need to um, start up. So we, um, as soon as that space is available, we'll put all the furnishings in it. And um, But Friday I'm gonna go there and uh, take some pictures and we're gonna start uh, advertising, marketing to try to get a provider to um, come into the Butasco building and start a the child, family child care. Um, so those are two, two sites that are kind of um, going on for that. We did a fundraiser movie night, um, and with those uh, funds, we're looking at sponsoring um, after school programs, um, whether it might be just on early out days, because that seems to be uh, an issue day for parents because they're getting out earlier, and where am I gonna bring my kids and things like that. Um, and then we are going to do a pie sale uh, for Christmas pies uh, from the Village Inn uh, in Virginia there. So be on the lookout for us selling pies all over the place. Any questions? Thank you. Are there, are there if I may, Mr. Yeah, Chairman, yeah. are there, do, do we know of providers that, that could be interested? I mean, that, that seems to be Part of the problem, yeah. Um, Renee said that she she did have um, three or four people throughout the summer pick up, you know, the applications, but the paperwork is, you know, fairly thick, and so that can sometimes scare people. Um, we um, had a conference call with uh, First Children's Finance yesterday, and um, one of the, their new um, economic development person that's on their team, um, Matt. He kind of looked over, uh, worked with one of the other pod models. Uh, in Detroit Lakes, I believe it was. And um, he said that they had, when they advertised for providers, they had tons of applications. And he said it was surprising. Um, so he said we might be surprised and find that, you know, there are people that are looking to start a daycare, but mm -hmm. haven't, you know, so don't have the means to start up because it is expensive. You have all that equipment and all that stuff that you know you have to get in the licensing piece. So the, the benefit is is that Kutaska um, is going to be like a partnership in this license. So they'll be able to provide you know some mentorship. Um, the rent is going to be ex you know really cheap and includes you know things. There'll be meal service there, um, laundry. I mean, there's a, a ton of benefits. Um, training will help with you know get them trained. Um, the, again, you know, there's just so many things that, you know, um, are, would be a benefit to somebody that would want to be in there, so. Any other questions? 
Thank you. Um, next meeting. The, the third Wednesday is the 16th, October 16th. Is that too early, Kara? I would, I would be, it would be um, more advantageous to me if it was the next week, um, 23rd. 23rd. Um, how does that? That's the fourth Wednesday. I think that's okay for me. I again have airport commission. Oh, we do. That's no, no, we have that on the 30th. 30th. Yeah. What we're having on the 30th? It's um, five, five Wednesdays in October. Yeah. Okay. I'm, huh? I'm gone on the 23rd. Okay. Okay. Um, or, or that 23rd is fine. the 16th or the 7th. You said that's too early, that that week. Well, it, it, we can make it work. It's, it's we have, it's, how we about have no board on the fifteenth? If you want to go to Tuesday, but I'll be in Twin Cities Tuesday. How about uh, the Thursday, the seventeenth? Uh, right, no, we have no, we're we, we are have hosting. AMC here then. We're hosting AMC. Oh, yeah. Actually, the twenty-third would work. At, uh, all right. Yeah, I can. Go I can and do the minutes and do minutes and yeah, and get packets ready. That's fine. Twenty third. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Uh, isn't it time for an out county meeting? Oh yeah. We talked about going to uh, Birchdale or somewhere out county. To where? Birchdale or Birchdale. out county. Um. That's an and, you know, I know it's a long trek for you folks, uh, and in fact, uh, I would make this offer just because I'd be so worried about your nutrition after driving so far, is that we'll, we'll provide lunch for you, too. You did last year, too. Yeah. All right. Uh, it I think it's been, me, it's been a couple of years. It took me a while to recover, but it was okay. <laughs> so, uh, if we were going to have lunch, then we would want to meet later? Mm -hmm. probably, probably 10 o'clock. Let's make it uh, 10.30. 10.30? Well, it would be done by 11.30. We can, we'll also move at 10 if 10, you like. 10 o'clock in Birchdale. 10 o'clock in Birchdale. Don't eat breakfast. Wear your sunglasses. The rainbow will be bright. <laughs> make sure, make sure the, make sure the rainbow is evident. Are we having caviar? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other business? Thank you. Thank you very much.